Hey guys, we've got a big thunderstorm hit, heading our way outside. I can hear the thunder and the lightning outside. But today I want to talk about a big faux pas that a lot of guys are doing. And it's really not a smart idea to do this. And, and I'm hearing from a lot of people mistakes that they're making that I've learned in the past. And a lot of other guys that have been over here talk about all the time. And a lot of the new guys, and even some of the guys that have been here for a while, keep on making this mistake. And that's showing people how much money you have and letting people know that you have a lot of money or you got some money coming from a pension or you got some money coming from disability or SSDI or VA compensation or whatever it may be. The last thing that you should do is tell, tell people how much money you're getting or making or whatever you're doing. You should not tell people about this. And... A couple of the guys that I know of have told family, uh, told, you know, and, and they're, obviously their wife is going to know. And you need to have a talk, a sit down talk with your wife or girlfriend to not tell people how much money you make or anything about what you make for um, from your, your, your retirement money or how much money you have in the bank. None of that should get out of that house. It should stay right here, right in the house. And a lot of guys, they still let their wives talk to their parents or their family or whatever. And they shouldn't do that, allow them to do that when it comes to money in the family. Because that, that Filipinos are different because they look out for the family all the time. You need to tell your, your wife or girlfriend in the beginning that I'm looking out for me and you. And, and, and that's it. I'm not looking out. If I want to help somebody, I'll help them on my own accord because I want to help them because I, I love them too and I want to help them out and it shouldn't be a thing where you're forced to uh, help anybody when it's your retirement you have to have money for emergencies you have to have money for things that happen especially over here because there is no backup over here but I see these guys and one guy he actually several people have called me about this over the past six months or so and they they tell me that they're they're um, seeing this girl and, and they want to marry this girl and they're gonna have a sit down with the family with the the mother and father and tell them that you know they're I want to marry your daughter and you know that I have enough more than enough money to take care of of her so you don't have to worry or anything you know I'll, I'll you know I want to be a, a good husband to her and all this stuff that's a mistake you don't have to do that. It's a mistake on several levels because they already know that you have enough money to take care of her. Otherwise, you wouldn't be asking, number one. Number two, they might start getting into things like, well, how much money do you make and stuff like that. And then what are you going to say? You know, uh, well, that's none of your business. You already opened up the can of worms. And, and that's, that's a big mistake right there. You can't, don't show everybody your marbles. You know, don't show everybody your cards. Don't show everybody everything you got. Uh, there's really no no need of doing that, and and for for several reasons, because they're gonna eat, some some of these people will eat you alive and spit you out at breakfast. You know, and I've seen a lot of guys where the family is just ripping apart the guy with anxiety. Um, I've seen a lot of people that as soon as they start, they let the cat out of the bag about how much money they have, then. Everybody in the family comes to hound them. And it's it's not something you really want to have people doing. And then you have to put your foot down. And you, and it can be embarrassing sometimes to put, have to put your foot down. You, you know, to say, no, I'm not giving out any money. I'm not loaning any money because they're not going to pay it back. Don't loan any money, you know, unless you really know the people or whatever. Because a lot of people aren't going to pay it back. They're not going to give it back to you. You might as well just say, here, take it. Um but you also need to have money. If you don't have enough money in your emergency savings and you don't have, you know, that money available for when you need it, you're dead in the water and you're giving your money away. You need to be saving for in your 70s, man, because your insurance is going to go up. Unless you got TRICARE or you got some other sort of health care that's going to take care of you over here. Um, get ready for your 70s. You know, because unless you got you got all kinds of money banked away, or you got some secret stash or something like that, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna find out how hard it is over here 
if you have an emergency. And when you hit your 70s, you're bound to have an emergency. If you didn't have one in your 60s, when you hit your 70s, you're probably going to have one. Whether it be cancer, whether it be um, anything. It could be a stroke, heart attack, um, anything. Skin cancer. You know, these are the problems that you can have. And for you guys, that you know, that are letting the cat out of the bag, I mean, wow, you're opening your, yourself up to a big can of worms. And, and you need to have a sit down with your girlfriends or your wife before you get married rather than after you get married to talk about the money talk. Um, some wives are really good. And I'm not saying all the women over here are money hungry or all the families over here are money hungry. A lot of them are not. But I would say a good chunk of them are. And you have to worry about that. There are going to be people in the family, and, and maybe she doesn't know it yet until she marries you or whatever, that are going to that might come to hound you for money or, or hint to you that they need money or whatever. Now, I myself, I help a few people out. You know, I I, I always do. You know, um, it's 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 part of me, but I do it on my own accord. And if somebody comes to me, I'm actually kind of less likely to give it to them if it's somebody that I don't know well. I'm less likely to give it to them because I don't want them to go around blabbing because then other people will hound me, maybe in that family or what have you. Um, and I tell, I, 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 if, if I'm helping somebody and they start hounding me for it or other family members start hounding me for it, I'm more likely to cut them off at some point, you know, because it just gets to be too much. And a lot of you guys will find this when you're over here and, and you're involved, whether it's with a, with a girlfriend or friends that are really close to you and tight with you, and, and then you, you loan them money or you tell them how much you have, they might come to you and ask you for money. Hey, Joe, can I borrow some money? Hey, Bill, can I borrow some money? Um, don't do it. Don't start that habit. Don't start that habit. Don't start it at all. Um, it's okay with, with very close family members, but I wouldn't make it a habit. Um, you, you, you know, you have to do everything at arm's length. You, you have to you know, don't let people get so close to you that they know everything about you. Don't let other expats know how much you make. Don't let people know, you know. Um, I live small for, for, for many reasons. I don't like to flaunt how much I make. And, and, and a lot of people think that I don't make that much money because of where I live, which is, you know, and fine. That's, that's a good thing. I don't. And also I do it because I like to save. That's number two. Number three, I lived on submarines. I know how to live small. I know how to live in compact places and make the best of that. Make the best of that area and still have it pretty orderly and, and not cluttered or anything. You know, I, I love living small. But it also shows people, well, geez, he's living amongst us. If Filipinos are around, he can't have that much money. He's not living in a big house. And the other thing is when you have a big house, you have to fill it. You have to fill it with furniture. Now, I've seen some vloggers out there, and as one one of the the the, the bigger vloggers out there, he was renting a house, um, and he every time he did videos, he had this vast space behind him that was all empty. And I'm thinking to myself, why would you want to have all that space empty? It just doesn't make any sense because you have to air condition it. That's number one. Number two, you bring people over your house, and they're looking at you like this guy rents this big huge space here but he only has a desk over there at the end of the the room and all the rest, the rest of the room is just getting wasted um and it costs money to furnish that you know it costs a lot of money to furnish that area and you know i don't want to live like that because you have to spend tons of money i want to keep my money in the bank as much as i can i want to save as much as i can i want to put away money as much as i can and then possibly travel once in a while with my girlfriend or go someplace with my girlfriend on occasion. You know, and that's 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 life. You know, but for you guys out there that that like to flaunt your money, the Philippines is the last place you really want to flaunt your money. Um, if you live up in BGC, okay, that's different. You're surrounded by wealthy people. They're not going to bug you. If, you. if you're up in Makati, most of the people there are fairly wealthy, you know, they don't care about your wealth because they got their they got their own wealth to worry about. They don't worry about your wealth, you know. But when you when you go to places that there's a lot of poverty and that's around you and you're flaunting your wealth, it's a big mistake. Big mistake because it puts a target on your back and it puts a target on your head that says sucker. 
you know, and, and you can become a sucker for people and, and you think, well, I got to help this person. I've seen several people come in here and they become a sucker to people. Um, you know, if it's your immediate family or something like that, you know, you, and you want to help them out, that's fine, you know, but make sure that they don't think that you're an easy touch every time and they're coming up, Hey, you got, you got, you got 500 pesos I can borrow. You got, you got 10,000 pesos I can borrow. You got a hundred thousand pesos. If, an emer if it's an emergency and you want to help them a little bit and give them a little bit, that's fine. You know, but always keep in mind that you have to have boundaries again. And we talk about these boundaries all the time and, and, and have those boundaries set in stone, both with your wife, your girlfriend and her family that you don't want to be, you know, if, 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 if Johnny wants to buy a guitar, you're not going to be, you're not going to be doing that because he doesn't really need it. You know, or if Johnny needs new shoes or something like that, you know, that's not your, 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 your place to do that. You don't, you shouldn't be doing that. That should be the family that should be doing that. But if Johnny goes in the hospital or something, you want to help out a little bit and contribute and everybody else is contributing. Sure. That's fine. You know, or if it's a real emergency with it, where it's a life or death and you might have to put some money down that they don't have, that's a different case. That's your family. Of course, you're going to help out. You know, I just want to throw this out there, guys. You really, <clears throat> you really have to have those boundaries set before you get into a relationship. You really need to think those out. But you also need to make sure you stick to them. And, and it's, it's very key and important to do that because a lot of people just don't. And you can go down big with all the money that's getting extracted from you each month. It's, it, can, it can add up after a while. You know, I mean, if you're independently wealthy and you got the ability to do it, then, hey, have at it if you want to. If, if that's your thing and you like, enjoy doing it, have at it, you know. But most guys don't have that money. And most guys that come over here are living on a lower budget. They shouldn't be doing that because they need to save for their 70s when you're going to get really, you know, hit hard for emergencies, you know. What, and you might think you're the healthiest guy in the world and, you you know, you're going to live forever because of the fact that you're, you know, you're really healthy, you eat right. No, it happens. I see guys come over here that are healthy as a horse and all it takes is, is, is a small thing to get you all tripped up and sick and you're in the hospital and all of a sudden your bills are running up and then you can't get out of the hospital because you can't pay it. What are you going to do? You know, but anyway, guys, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. I, I want to throw that out there. It's something you know, I want, I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and, and there's been a few things going on this week that kind of reminded me of that. So I just thought I'd throw this one out there today and mull it over in your head and think about it. Because you guys, especially you guys back in the States, when you come over here and you're here for a few years, you'll see what I'm talking about. God bless, guys. Take care. I hope you enjoyed the show.